Hang on, I gotta flip it around. How did that get unflipped? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Pretty good. How about with you? Going good, going good. You look great. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So you ready to get started? Whenever you are. All right, let's go. Let's go. Um, so first I'll, I'll introduce uh, our organization and then I'll introduce you and then we'll we'll get right into it. Um, so hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Dylan. I'm from the Israeli American Civic Action Network, or as our friends like to call us, ICANN. Uh, in case you're not familiar with us, ICANN is building a powerful movement of Israeli immigrants living in America with American allies, working for a better America, a more secure Israel, and a stronger U.S.-Israel alliance. And as part of helping to build a better America, we have great um, guests like our, our senator here with us um, from Senate District uh, 30 in California, which covers Culver City, Ladera Heights, Westmont, and the Crenshaw downtown and Florence neighborhoods of L.A., uh, Senator Mitchell, you are uh, chair of the Budget Committee. Is that right? That's right. Senate and, Budget Committee. Mm -hmm. Senate Budget Committee, and then uh, you're you're member of the Public Safety and Health, which I think is important for uh, for today's discussion. Yeah. Great. So thank you so much for being with us today. Um, so I guess first I just want to ask how how are you doing? Uh, how are things going? What what's what's happening? I appreciate you asking that question. I am fine. Thank you. Sure. Uh, my family is fine. We are uh, uh, following the directives of uh, our county public health officer, um, um, Dr. Farrar. We're following the director of the directives of the governor and the state public health director, uh, Dr. Angel. And uh, we are staying home, washing our hands frequently, practicing social distancing, physical distancing, as the governor likes to say, uh, and doing all that we can to stay healthy and keep um, our friends and family healthy as well. So thanks for asking. Good. Yeah, and, and I think that's important to note too, is, um, you know, I, I'm not a doctor. I, I, I don't think, um, I don't know if you're a doctor, <laughs> but you know, we have to, we have Nor to follow do I our... play one on TV. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, so for for those listening, um, you know, we're not we're not giving out medical advice here, um, but please follow the directives of your your uh, local public uh, health official, uh, either in the state or county. Yes. Um, so, so first of all, just to start really general, what what do you want to tell us right now? What's on your mind? What do you what do you want people to know? What do you want your your constituents to be thinking about? I appreciate that. First of all, I want to encourage everyone to. Um, access all of the resources that are available, that are being made available at every level of government. Mm -hmm. I am choosing to focus on two websites really on a daily basis, um, covid19.ca.gov is the one that's been created by um, the, the state administration that's informed by our State Department of Public Health that has amazing resources and links to all of the supports that are available. Uh, when people have questions about employment development department, you know, DMV, my license is due for renewal. The DMV is closed. What do I do? Yeah. Um, unemployment insurance. How do I access it? What should I expect? Uh, information, current information about the time frame around the stay um, at home, stay safe at home. Time frames around schools. We heard today. Uh, that the governor has made the official statement that he that schools will not open across the state um, for the remaining of the school year. So going to the governor's website, I think is a great place, whether you just are curious about what's going on, if you're a small business and you're looking for support or a nonprofit, it is a wonderful one-stop place um, to find information. My own website, SD30, as in Senate District, SD30.Senate dot ca dot gov um our we've got a page that's in spanish so we're trying to make sure that all of the residents of the 30 cent district have uh access to important information as well and so we are updating our website multiple times throughout the course of the day you know trying to keep track i had my staff give me a list i think the governor we're currently at i think it looks like 17 executive orders wow. um, that are his way of, you know, declaring a, that it's just, we're in a state of emergency and through these executive orders, he's, you know, um, initiating relief efforts. So just trying to keep up with all of the actions he's taking um, daily is, is, it's a lot. So making sure people have access to that information, I think is really important. Uh, I'm doing teletown halls also. Yes. We've done two so far, one last mm -hmm. week. 
We did one in Spanish this week where I partnered with Trilla um, right. to make sure again that monolingual Spanish speaking households have information. And next week I'm partnering with KYCC and a number of other um, community-based organizations to do one in Korean. Oh, so I'm working very hard to make sure that everyone, that, that, that language is not a barrier to information. The partnership right. today with you um, hopefully will identify another segment of the district I represent to try to make sure people have access to me as your state senator and access to information. Yeah, I'll get to that here in, uh, I guess, right now. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, we we represent mainly um, the Jewish community, uh, in particular the the Jewish uh, uh, immigrant communities, um, uh, Israeli and, and Persian and Russian as well, mm -hmm. uh, through through partnerships. Um, it's amazing. Uh, you know, during this this crisis, we've had a lot of our uh, constituents who are concerned about food. I mean, basic things like being able to access food, older uh, older constituents. Um, you know, and then of course, income, paying rent and these kinds of things. And you mentioned a lot of these great resources and we'll make sure to share those websites. Um, but just very broadly and briefly, what, what, what can you tell these, these folks who are concerned about those basic needs? Um, you know, from my perspective, it's times like this that government is designed to provide protection to all of the residents of the state of California. It's times like this where government steps up to the plate to provide protections direct protections as well as information. And so I'm proud to be a California resident. Absolutely. I'm proud of our governor. I'm proud of the mayor of the city of Los Angeles, uh, the actions the city council has taken, every level of government has taken um, to respond quickly. You know, government sometimes get a, gets a bad rap of being reactionary and we take too long to take action. That is not the case in the middle of this pandemic, at least here at the local level. Absolutely. Um, and so the, the, the governor, uh, you know, has inter, uh, issued um, some directives. Uh, the city council took a vote on a very long um, Zoom city yes. council <laughs> meeting last week. We're all learning, we're all happy. We are, yeah, that's right. Um, where they took action in terms of rents and making sure that people know that they don't have to worry about confronting evictions. Mm -hmm. um, What's gonna be important is that people really understand what these actions mean. Uh, I've been having conversations with my staff. We had about 300 emails uh, uh, just since Monday into my district office. People okay. asking largely about clarification about you know, rent and eviction protection and mortgage forbearance. Mm -hmm. And the best way I can describe it is these policies have given us um, time the protection of time, but not grace. Sure. People need to understand and, and reach out to your mortgage lender, your individual banker to understand what they're gonna do individually with regard to your case. Um, but I think some people have been surprised. I think when they heard the news, I think that they thought that, you know, rent and, and your mortgage responsibility was gonna disappear. It is not. <laughs> you've been true. given the grace of, you've been given time, not grace. Right. And so I'm very concerned about many of my constituents and their ability to play catch up when we find our way out of out of this pandemic and those protections are gone and landlords will look to you and mortgage companies will look to you perhaps for a balloon payment mm -hmm. for three months or four months of back rent or unpaid mortgage. So I think it's really important that people understand that you not assume because these um, policies have been made that you shouldn't reach out and have a direct conversation with your landlord or with your mortgage holder um, to make sure you understand what is available to you and that you're engaged in direct communication. Um, same with the utilities. You know, we heard uh, at LA, uh, DWP and others that they would not be cutting off utilities because of unpaid balances, but ultimately those bills will be due. And so I think it's important that people understand that. Absolutely. And, and you bring up a, a great point. And, and um, you know, you mentioned when we come out of the pandemic, um, has there been any discussion? I know we're still early, uh, relatively early um, in this in this issue uh, with the pandemic. But has there been any thought given to what does it mean to come out of this of this pandemic? Um, you, you know, I, I, I was talking to, to some constituents over the past week or so, and there's been questions about well, let's say the emergency order is lifted and, and God forbid I get sick. 
I get, I catch it, you know, just because we've, we've surpassed the peak doesn't mean that we've surpassed the, the actual, has there been any, do you know, and I don't want to put you on the spot. Has there been any thought given to this kind of, do you, that, you know, I don't know. I, I, uh, in that specific example you gave, I don't yeah. think we have to worry most of the, um, um, delays, if you will, um, have been issued for months at a time. Gotcha. You know? Okay, great. Uh, pushing okay, back um, the, the uh, April 15th due date of our federal and state tax has been pushed back, I want to say 90 days to July. Yep. And so um, I don't think anyone should worry that um, these kinds of supports will be lifted prematurely. When you talked about what comes next, I thought you were talking about really as we look at the devastating impact this has had on our economy. Well, that too, yeah. How do we recover from that? Um, I heard from some colleagues yesterday in a meeting I participated in that in the greater Los Angeles area, 60 hotels have closed. Wow. The others that, that are still open are only operated, operated at a five to 10% occupancy. When I think about my own district, the 30th Senate district and the impact um, the entertainment industry and the hospitality industry has really on LA County as a whole, you know, 90% of the entertainment industry is impacted, 80% of hospitality. We know the restaurant industry, um, all services. So when you said, you know, what comes next uh, as true, yeah. the chair, that's yeah. where my mind goes. How do we help those businesses recover? How do we help um, those hundreds of thousands of people who work in those industries recover? You know, will they reopen? You know, at the federal level, I think, um, um, I was on a Zoom meeting this past Saturday with uh, um, Senator Kamala Harris, right. who uh, talked about the next generation or the next version if, of the federal stimulus package, because there will be additional bills, hoping that paid family leave is included. Uh, I've been talking to people here uh, locally about workers' comp. Um, if you contract the virus at work, um, do you mm -hmm. qualify for workers' comp insurance? So there are all of these you know, um, ripple effect issues as a policy maker, um, I find myself consumed by. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you're thinking about those things. And I think we're all glad you're thinking about those things because, you know, um, I, I know there are some leaders, especially at the national level, I won't name names, who want this thing to be over by Easter or <laughs> want this thing to be over by the end of the month. And I think uh, the, the definition of over is going to be um, fluid. Um, it absolutely is. And I think that's what we all struggle with that. Yep. We all want a date certain. Um, yep. We all want to know by this date, the kids will go back to school. By this date, I can go back in our state's capital. Um, but, but you're right. I think we're all going to have to recognize that um, the work we're doing now in an effort to flatten the curve will just flatten the curve. But there's still an uh, unknown amount of time that we're all going to have to engage in these similar practices. Absolutely. So. Um... And again, I, I don't want to put you on the spot and maybe you don't know, but, you know, I, I'm sure you, as many legislators, had an agenda in January <laughs> for, for, for your, your, your legislation this session. Um, do you have any sense of what, what are your priorities now? How have they shifted? How, I mean, you kind of just mentioned it, but um, is there any specific thing that you're thinking about that maybe we can help with or we can support and, and give you? I have to be honest. Um, I think personally, we have entered a, an, an entirely new season. Okay. And as important as I and any policymaker may think that their legislative package is that's sure. supported by stakeholders, perhaps it has, you know, coalitions of people who have sponsored it. You know, I think we all have to take a pause and figure out based on what we know today, what's best for the residents of California. Sure. And so I um, am clear that that's got to be my top priority. I, for example, have two bills. This is the second calendar year of the legislative session. And so I had two bills that carried over from the first year that were our priority because this was the year that we had to get them done um, that involved criminal justice reform that deal with something called fines and fees that many who've been touched by the system are expected to pay upon their release. And another bill that dealt with the cost of phone calls and the cost of items in the commissary when you're in the county jail. Uh, but my ongoing conversations with the same group of stakeholders, their focus has shifted. Their focus mm -hmm. is their concern about the health and safety of people who are incarcerated today. So my very sponsors and stakeholders of those two bills, I know their attention has shifted to safety, to can we expect to engage in social distancing when you're in congregate care, mm -hmm. both in nursing homes, in foster care group homes, in a variety of settings. 
Um, so I have to say that my priorities are now the priorities of my constituents and how we support you and navigate our way out of and through this pandemic. So that's got to be my priority. And as budget chair, following closely uh, the documentation we've received already from the Department of Finance um, that says it's, it's a new day. Yes. That the January proposal that they submitted to us um, uh, will not be the May revise that we ultimately have to take action on. You know, with us delaying collection of, 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 of state income taxes, um, we won't know, um, quite frankly, the true uh, income of the state by May, because that date has been pushed out to July. So the uh, Department of Finance has made it clear the May revise will be what they're calling a working budget, what I call mm -hmm. a keep the lights on budget. Yeah. Um, and we will continue to work the process based on when we get the information and what that information is in terms of the health of the general fund. Great, okay, good. That's, that's great to hear. Um, and it's good to hear that people are shifting focus uh, and, and recognizing that we have, we're, we're in a new normal. <laughs> yeah, well, and, yeah. And, 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 and nothing um, has been, uh, no decision has been made sure. by the leadership yep. of either of our houses. Um, but you know, if anybody follows this process, you know that um, you know, deadlines will soon be missed. Um, we, we, when we um, recessed March 16th, we said at that point we would return April 13th, which was our normal date to return after our one week spring break. It's not likely that we'll be back April 13th. Sure. Um, and so I think, you know, we will stay tuned. Our leadership is communicating um, in both houses, um, both parties, communicating with us and the administration frequently. We have um, weekly caucus calls. Uh, then we've got subcommittees. I was on a call today with the LA County delegation. Um, and so we're staying in consistent contact with one another. Um, on the Senate side, the Secretary of the Senate has investigated and piloted a process by which if need be, we could engage in the work of the Senate, even if we're not present in the Capitol, Good. probably much like what the City Council did. That's so um, that work is being done. And so if we have to convene um, prior to when it's deemed safe for us to return to the building, I think we'll be in a strong position to be able to do that. Perfect, perfect. Um, and it, you, you mentioned it earlier, and I, I just want to touch on it just just uh, so viewers can um, can be clear. Your, your district staff, um, first of all, I, I hope they're safe and good and safe and sound. And are, 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 I, I spoke to, to a couple of them um, this week, and they're phenomenal. Um, are they still able to do casework and, and everything's good? Oh, absolutely, good. absolutely. Okay. We're, we're all working. And I have to tip my hat again to yeah. um, Senate leadership, that of my pro tem, Tony Atkins, Senator Tony Atkins, and the Secretary of the Senate, Erica uh, Contreras, um, yeah. first woman Secretary of the Senate, and still relatively new in her job. And she um, has led a yeoman's effort. There are 900 employees just of the Senate. Um, and to make the decision in terms of those who um, you know, served a critical function, how we make sure they were safe, how we transitioned. And so we've had a seamless transition. My entire staff, budget staff in Sacramento, Sacramento staff and my district office staff um, are all working remotely and we're given the resources and the tools to do so. So emails are being answered, phones are being answered. If you call either office number, you are it's transferred to a phone line that will be picked up by a live person. So we are continuing to do casework. I mentioned the 300 emails we received Absolutely. just Monday. Staff are working on responding to those, um, continuing to have conversations and meetings that we would have been having in person are now happening via, via telephone or Zoom. And so I've got a um, social work intern um, from USC who her uh, supervising social worker sent me a text today and said that she was so excited. She was on a uh, informational uh, meeting with the um, United States Surgeon General. Oh, great. Um, and she says she's working harder now since we are not in the office than she had been when we were in the office. And I thought to myself, me too. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Work is continuing. Work yeah, is continuing. I, I, I hope that uh, many Californians are able to continue doing that if they're able to and if it's appropriate. I, I think it's saved. I don't know if you've noticed it saved our traffic, our beautiful environment is <laughs> the air is clear. It, so. You know, Mother Earth, um, it, it's amazing um, how she can self heal and how Absolutely. Quickly. And to see the skyline and, and you're right, traffic. And, and I've heard it may be kind of social media folklore, I'm not sure, 
but to hear that, you know, the skies, I've been to China and, and witnessed their air quality. Yeah. And to, to hear that their air quality is the best it's been in decades and that uh, the canals in Venice are running clear, um, that would be the silver lining in this really uh, omnipresent cloud. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, if we talk uh, two two quick additional things, um, one about discrimination. Uh, you know, we, mm -hmm. we've heard about discrimination related to, to COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, rep you represent an amazing diverse district. Um, we've heard accounts of, of Asian Americans being targeted for for general harassment. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know if you heard the um, or if you saw there was an FBI notice about um, white supremacist groups um, looking to target for in the intentional spread of the virus, looking to target uh, law enforcement and even uh, Jewish Americans. Um, and you represent a strong Jewish community in your district. Okay. Yes. What, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, what, what do you, I, I, we're, we're concerned about um, kind of the weaponization. I mean, anybody can, I guess, contract this and, and, and hurt others. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts on this? Mm -hmm. So, um... You know, I, uh, I'm not often rendered speechless, but having read those accounts, once again, I'm rendered speechless. And I, and I think it's tragic that we have a federal administration that I believe feeds it to refer to a, um, a virus that has been appropriately named by health professionals um, in a way that would suggest uh, a country, a group of people should be blamed for its spread is the epitome of ignorant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we all are gonna have to continue our work. This isn't new. We will have to continue our work around protecting communities that um, uh, tend to be targeted, um, educating all of us um, about what hate, um, and, and, and violent actions that result from hate look like. Yeah. Um, it, you know, it, it's continuing the work that, that we've never had the luxury of getting beyond, quite frankly. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, we, we did talk about shifting gears and, and focusing on the health crisis. Um, you know, um, as, as somebody who works in this uh, space with civil rights and, and these kinds mm -hmm. of things, um, you know, we, we also tried to shift gears and, and we found that um, it's just, there's still this persistent anti-Semitism, persistent mm -hmm. discrimination, and it's mm -hmm. shocking and disturbing that, that people are going to leverage this um, to, to attack and hurt others. Right, right. Um, right. And, 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 and let me just say that that's not new, so we shouldn't right. be surprised. Right. It, it's a reflection of why your work, why our collective partnership and work in, in all times, in all circumstances is important. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I guess it's shocking just because it's, 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 we're in an unprecedented pandemic and you would hope that <laughs> better angels would prevail, but I guess not. I, I hope <laughs> springs eternal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so just, uh, I, I, I said uh, two more, and I have one, one more and then another, or another easy question for you. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was census day. Yes. <laughs> what do you want to tell us about the census? I know our, our deadline has been extended, but just here's your chance to tell your constituents to don't forget to do their census. <laughs> so, you know, as I said earlier, it, it's times like this that we are clear about the importance and the critical role government plays in, in all of our lives, whether we acknowledge it or not, in all of our lives. And the census is a perfect example of that. Mm -hmm. It took me under four minutes when I got the form on my iPad to complete it for my entire household. Um, it's, I guess, frankly, it's fortunate this year that it is being promoted electronically so you don't have to worry about someone coming to the door and that person to person contact. Why is the census critical? First of all, it's confidential. Second of all, it is the way government makes its decisions about who gets what when. What do you mean by that, Senator? You know, the census is what allows the federal government to understand where population trends are and how they allocate government resources. And so if you are concerned about K through 14 education, or if you're concerned about California getting its fair share, since we are a donor state to the federal government, if you're concerned about California getting our fair share for circumstances such as this, 
to make sure we get federal matching dollars to help Californians who are in need. If you are concerned about fair representation, uh, I've heard a couple of scenarios that if our numbers don't come in true and accurate, that we could be at risk of losing congressional representation. Those congressional lines are drawn based on population trends. And if we don't show our true numbers as Californians, if we can't account for all of the close to 40 million that we all know who live here, because we mm -hmm. see them on the freeways every day, um, <laughs> we could be at risk of, of losing those really important resources. And so I can't emphasize its importance enough and I can't emphasize its ease enough. It literally took me four minutes or less to complete it. So I'm hoping everyone within the sound of my voice will do so as quickly as possible. Just get it done. The reminders will come in the mail. They will give you your code that you can log in if you don't have access. Um, there's a phone number where you can call and answer the very simple questions about who's living in your household, their age, race, ethnicity. It's okay. easy. Please do it. And, and, and can, can you just speak for a moment? You know, we have a large immigrant population. You have a large immigrant population yeah. in your district. Yes. Can, can you mention in some, just a word for immigrants who may be concerned about um, if, not understanding what it is maybe or, or, or what? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, again, uh, that's why I started by saying yeah. Your information is private. Yes. We have worked very hard as policymakers in California who strive to protect the rights and interests of our immigrant community, our my immigrant brothers and sisters. Yeah. And so I don't want you to feel that this is an invasion of government. Um, um, it is a way to make sure that the school your children attend have the resources they need to educate your children. And so it's a way that we access federal dollars. And so I don't want people to be afraid yeah. Um, we just need to make sure you're counted and we have protections from as far up as possible that um, that that your privacy will be protected as a participant in the census. And that, and that means I think a lot of people are confused. They think you have to be a citizen. If you're here on a green card, if you're a permanent resident, no matter what your status is, you need to be counted. Uh, exactly. And, and for all the reasons we talked about in the beginning. Right. For all the reasons we talked about in the beginning, all the services that the state provides, it, now more than ever, I think it's... You know. Exactly, exactly. So, and, and, and no matter the age, if, it, if a baby was just born this week, if the baby came home and was going to be in your household as of yesterday, April 1st, you count the baby. Uh, I did um, um, recorded a video um, in the Capitol because we're all doing all we can to do outreach. And I posted it on my um, Facebook page. And in typical my fashion, I go went off script and I talked about if it's a brand new baby born and if Uncle Leroy, who's 108, lives in your house, you got to count Uncle Leroy too. So, <laughs> you know, age doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if, if they're working. You got to count them. Thank you. Thank you. So the last question, what can we do? How can we help you? What, what can we do to make, make your life easier? Um, so I appreciate that question. Uh, I think keep yourself safe. If we all you know, this is a basic lesson of compliance. If we all do what the health professionals tell us to do, wash our hands. <laughs> if we um, engage in personal distancing. I like that too. I like that personal are, distancing. That's yeah, the governor, the, the, the governor has, 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 has we can be uh, social. Also his language. He yeah. said that you can be social, but you have yeah. to engage in personal distancing. That's good. Yeah. So yeah, I like it too. So personal distancing six feet away. Um, the state um, health officer yesterday uh, at a press conference began to talk about, you know, the value of wearing masks in public. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm hoping that that doesn't put a run on uh, masks that we know our healthcare providers are currently strapped for. I've gotten calls from community clinics uh, and the hospitals and in-home support care services workers across LA County who don't have access to the equipment they need as a part of their profession to be safe. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that folks are going to sew cotton masks, that those of us who aren't sick, but you just want that extra degree of protection. A lot of what I've read recently says just wearing a mask also helps you remember not to touch your face. Exactly. Um, and so so uh, personal distancing, washing our hands, staying home when we can. Uh, on my own website, uh, again, sd30.senate.ca.gov, um, we've um, included a list that a community partner, community agency is listing, and he's updating every day of the grocery stores throughout the greater Los Angeles area 
and the hours that they're doing specialized kind of services, the, the first two hours that are open for seniors, um, those with physical disabilities, et cetera, et cetera. So just being conscious, you know, not hoarding. I think that we all um, are clear that the food chain and the food supply is still operating. And so it's no need for us to go in and violate the policies of the markets by getting more than two of an item. Um, and really asking that, recognizing that we're doing this to protect those who are most vulnerable, to protect those who have autoimmune uh, deficiencies, um, mm -hmm. our heart conditions, or are 65 and older. And lastly, I think check in with your, our neighbors. You know, this is our opportunity to practice community, absolutely, which is a core element of your faith. Mm -hmm. um, so our ability to practice community, check in with our friends and neighbors, you know, the stories that I've heard, the experiences I've had where people are really taking care of other people, um, I hope is one element um, that we don't lose as we find our way on the other side of the crest of this pandemic. I think that's something that um, we all need to hold on to um, as members of a civilized society. Perfect. That's a great message to end on. Senator, thank you. Thank you for practicing community with us here this afternoon. And we will, we will this video is recorded, so we'll share it and make sure our constituents uh, see it. And uh, thank you again for taking the time. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been great. All right. Thank you, Senator. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.